What's up, guys? We got another game with the white pieces against Stott, 1525. Here, we get a Carol Khan on the board. We play the advanced Carol Khan. Black plays the main line with bishop f5. And we want to harass the bishop, so we play this attacking h4 move. He responds immediately, h5, <clears throat> stopping our pawn advance. Now we can't trap his bishop. We'll just continue with our development and go knight f3. He closes his pawn chain with the bishop outside of it, and now he's going to play for c5. Um, so that's fine. We have this square. So we're going to develop our bishop, offer the trade. He's going to develop his knight, protect the bishop. Um, we're going to develop our bishop, pin the knight, re-threatening the bishop to double his pawn structure. Um, and he immediately plays c5. What does this threaten? Well, maybe to break down the pawn chain. What's the drawback? Well, he opens up some light squares. His king's not even kind of close to castling, and he's opening up the center. His pawn is currently hanging. Um, also, I can take the bishop. The knight is pinned, so he has to take this way. Maybe you have even e6 ideas there. Um, I think I'm just going to, like, blow up the blow up in the center since he's not castled and can't develop anytime soon. I'm going to take this, whoa, I'm going to take this bishop and <laughs> and he takes with the knight. What's the drawback? Three seconds. His queen's hanging. What was that? Caragon destroyed. Don't tell me you guys are stuck in 600 when 1500 just do that. Okay, he opens up with d4. We're up against Sharish. He's rated 1536. He hits us with the London. Some type of London. We like to go c5 on move 2. That's our line. He plays c3. This is an inaccuracy. You're supposed to play e3. Um, so let's try to take advantage of this inaccuracy. We're going to play queen b6, immediately attacking the b2 pawn. Now that the bishop moves, that pawn is weak. That's the drawback of the London. It very early weakens the b2 square, so we target it early. To protect it, he goes b3. But this is slow and weakens the dark squares further. So, what do we do? We want to open up the dark squares now that they're weak. So, we take. He takes. This opens up the dark diagonal. Which is weaker because the B pawn moved. Um... Let's see. What do we want to do? Well, this pawn is currently vulnerable. Let's develop and attack the pawn. There's many traps here. Um, so he very solidly just defends the pawn and the bishop and opens up his diagonal. The drawback of this move is it, the bishop can no longer go back and the dark squares are weak, right? Right, so we're gonna go e5, which looks insane. Kind of a you know backward pawn. What are we doing to our structure? But the point is, we hit the bishop with tempo to open up our bishop, and when our bishop gets here, his bishop can't go back. This diagonal's weak. It might be troublesome for him because we can add pressure with our queen, um, our bishop. And a knight, so that's a lot of pieces. He's not he might have trouble defending. Fine. 
So he takes our pawn in the center. Um, we can't recapture without losing our knight. This also blocks his bishop. So right now his bishop kind of looks like a pawn. Um, we're going to develop with tempo. Also just note that queen a5, maybe you can win your pawn back, but um, I'm going to go bishop b4, bringing another piece into the game with check. Check is the best. Leaving our knight hanging because we're gangster. Now he can't put his knight here because it hangs. He can't block with the queen. Wowzers, yowzers. If he had moved his knight here, like I said, we can add a ton of pressure that he just can't handle. So he decides to move his king. Obvious drawbacks. Can't castle, block your bishop. Open diagonals. Not good. And for what? We're down a pawn, but who cares, right? He can't even develop his knight. Very precarious. It's our turn. How do we follow up on our initiative? I mean, we can win our pawn back and say material is now equal and your king is garbage. We can do that with a queen check. Or maybe not. Maybe we can't do that. Our knight's currently hanging. We can go for the, the dark square bishop. Or we can go in here saying, try to develop your knight, I dare you. Let's do that. Let's get out of the way, not trade pieces, because we want to attack his king. So I want to... And this bishop's not doing anything, right? It's not threatening us. For example, knight d2 is a huge blunder as a royal fork. Also now, if I go bishop c c3, his rook's trapped. And if he takes our bishop, royal fork. So he moves out of the fork, um, moves his queen. Did, what does this threaten? Our knight. So that's important to, to see. We could defend it with pawns, but after un passant, it opens up his bishop, which is the one thing I don't like. If we give this check, I don't really want to give useless checks at the moment. Um, this check is another fork, if we can somehow deflect the pawn. Hmm, options. I do want my light square, but I wish I could put it on A6, teleport, that would be sweet. That would be sweet. Although, I, maybe I could let him take this. What if I castle, he takes that. I go bishop c3. I win a full rook. Or in the exchange. He can't take. Oh no, what am I saying? This knight will be gone. I'm hallucinating again. I want to go d5. I bet after en passant. And knight takes. His bishop's open. Although his king's open. Let's do that. Develop a piece. Check. Bishop f5. I, I like this. I like this. His king is just super awkward. So just normal development. Getting the rooks to the open files is going to do wonders. He does not take en passant, which is crazy. Instead goes f3. What does this threaten? My knight? Uh, I kind of want to just go crazy here. Should I do it? Should I do it? Um. Yeah, my knight doesn't... I mean, you can go here. It doesn't have good squares, really. So I'm going to go... G5 saying, take my knight, I'll take your bishop. He does he does take my knight. I will take his bishop. Look at these pawns. Now he wins another pawn, but he shouldn't be in pawn grabbing mode. He should be in I need to castle immediately mode. Now my king's weak, but what's the drawback of his move? Uh I can take this? Check. This is forced, and we have a bishop check here, we have a knight in here, and we have a checkmate here. You can play any of those, they're winning. Checkmate in one is clearly the best move. 
Um, so that's what the one we're going to play. That was pretty fast. We'll, we'll get another one. We get one with the white pieces. This time, we're playing Vav K 2023. He's rated 1600, so this is serious. 1660. So now we're almost facing 1700s. And they're hitting us with the Karakon defense, very popular these days. Popularized by many streamers and so forth. We play the advanced Karakon, and he plays the main line, Bishop f5. We go h4 and try to harass this bishop if he lets us. Oftentimes they'll go h5 to stop you. But in this case, white decides to go e6. He did not ask himself, what is the threat of h4? It's surprising to me that a 1700 who plays the Garo Khan doesn't know that your bishop gets trapped in this move. Like, this is the main line. It's weird. Because now, by playing e6, he blocks the possibility of going back. And because he didn't move the h-pawn to h6 or h5, he blocked the possibility of retreat diagonal. So now our queen supports this. So we just kick it. And when he goes here, we just kick it again with the pawn. And then we hit it's trapped. So you win the game by making... Imagine beating a 1700 with seven pawn moves in a row as white to start the game. In the Queen's Gambit, they said the Karo Khan was all pawns, no hope. But I'm the one playing with all pawns. And I'm winning, so... Maybe it was reverse. Now it's sinking in. Now he's realizing... Oh. That's why he played h4. So that when I retreat... h5. I would really like it if he could resign. Now, if you play the Karo Khan, you absolutely have to pay attention to the, getting your bishop trapped. It's one of the main ideas for white. So he goes here, but of course, we're going to trap it. I guess he'll play on and just sack it for a pawn, but I mean, you're down a bishop, so. And if you blundered that, good luck with the rest of the game. Okay, so we can take two ways. Which one's better? I actually don't know what's best here. So I'm just going to go with the natural move. Since I can't figure out the differences. You know, with, if this was classical, I could put some real thought into it where his minor piece is going to go, blah, blah, blah. But here I'm just going to make the natural move, give my knight a good square. My queen can always go wherever. He develops with this check, but this just encourages us to block with tempo. So I don't think this move is particularly thrilling for him. I don't think... Um, it's very surprising he's 1700 because he's not playing the Karagan. Like you're supposed to play for c5. I have no idea what bishop out and back is that's crazy um, he's pressuring this pawn but it's currently covered twice so that's not a threat I want to continue my development ideally so I'm just gonna develop my king's bishop to its most natural square bishop d3 and so far everything's looking good because I'm up a piece. You know, and when you lose a piece in like a middle game, maybe there's counterplay, the complexity. But if you lose a piece in the opening and like move five, I get to start clean. It was like a piece up, so that's not going to work out for him. He goes f6, trying to break down our center, but he's not developed his kings in the center. Um, and he's down a piece. I'm just going to ignore him and continue my development. I think that's wise. So what's an active move that I have? Let's see. OK, 
can develop my night out, but where does it really want to go, you know? Hard to say. There's an eventual like C4 here, but that's a little long-winded. I just want to develop now. I'm going to defend the center, develop my bishop out, cover the dark squares um, that I weakened a little bit around my king. I guess he has move like this, but easily stoppable with queen out or queen c7 or b4 even um, so he lashes out with g5 what does this threaten the bishop the pawn the drawback exposing his king further not developing i don't like the move and when we take um, we open up our rook and now it goes controlling a ton of squares so we are going to take now our rook is much stronger than it was previously his knight also now can't develop to any square this pawn is not hanging um, however our central pawn has been re fully released of all pawn tension and all peace tension meaning this e5 pawn is invulnerable it does not have to be defended so i don't need to keep my bishop on this diagonal so i want to retreat it to this diagonal and pressure this pawn instead so I'm going to move back towards the central square, also discouraging c5. He protects the pawn, the pawn with the pawn, trying to stabilize it. However, it's important to note this rook's undefended. And there's an x-ray, and if I add a third attacker, I can actually take this pawn. Takes, 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 okay. So queen d2, queen c1 stems as an idea from that. Alternatively... Um, if I go here, I guess I can always try to get my knight in some other way. I'm not even sure where I want to put it, so I don't want to move it yet. Also, he moved his h-pawn. This undefends a light square. You get the check-in, but it kind of he runs. I don't see that as like a something you necessarily want to encourage. So I'm going to go and create a threat. Develop, create a threat, and he'll probably want to castle queenside i mean it's not good to castle either way for him um so he moves his queen here what is this threaten nothing this pawn is solid as heck doesn't i guess he's trying to support c5 one more time um but again his king's in the center i'm not sure exactly what that does also it undefends this so i'm pretty sure i can take it with a piece this actually threatens this, so he might be inclined to take that. Um, however, this, if he ignores me and let's say plays c5, yeah, then it's like I take, I develop him, then I take this with my rook. That's, I mean, they're both good. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I want my knight, so I don't want to sack it first, but it's more forcing. And once my bishop's here, He's kind of screwed, so. I'm going to sack the bishop. I want my knight. I want my knight. So he takes. But I take. He sees it's pinned. But now you're just down a piece. So I don't get why he pre-moved like all of that. To be down a piece. Like it was some sort of plan. Weird. Um, also, this pawn's hanging. Now if I give this check. And he goes here or here then I have the royal fork but if I give this check and he goes up one I mean that's still completely winning I'm sure like I don't know rookie in and up but either way I'm just gonna take this pawn it hits the queen it offers checks it creates a pass pawn it's clearly winning um, so he moves his queen to the side he now he has to watch out for forks for checks a rook and queen infiltrations he, he can no longer bring a rook to f8 um so i kind of like threatening stuff with my queen his king is trapped it can't escape that way so if i give this check and he goes here do i have like a checkmate as in rook takes however he takes back queen g5 check i guess he could sack a knight yeah, there's no reason to... I only have three minutes, so I don't want to get too fancy. So if I could bring my queen in, that should be GG, but also my rook.
Oh well, that's miles away. I think just, I mean, the rook is natural, but I think the queen just mates. So like queen f2. King up, is that his best move? Yeah, I can't coordinate properly. Queen f2, king up. I guess I have this square after I move my knight. I'm going here. Queen f2. I don't care. I know it's already developed. I know I could improve a rook. But these possibilities just look strong. I just don't know what to do on king up, which looks insane because it's like you're walking into it. I guess I just move my knight. Like, natural square threatens more. Ch yeah, I just move my knight. Calm move. You're threatening a ton of stuff. He goes for c5. What does this threaten? Sneak attack and my center. Drawback. I now have my check idea followed by checkmate, I believe. So we're going to throw in the check. And the reason I wanted to wait was for my queen to be here was so that when he moves up, I have the coordination square of 7, which provides this checkmate outpost. So after I go here, I'm pretty sure he should have no moves. Ding. Won a piece from the start. Converted it in less than 20 moves against a 1700 into a checkmate. These guys play the Karaoke Khan, we blast them into a Bolivian. World number 48, Joey Frat Chess Handbook. Okay, hopefully you're getting an idea of how to harass these Karaoke Khan players, always fun. Good luck in your games, see you in the next video.